Thank you. I uh, really enjoyed this session. Uh, Brian Buchanan's my name. I just wanted to ask Ross a question about Ukraine uh, and ownership of farms. Is it mainly corporate? Is there any family farms? Um, where does most of their foreign investment come from? And do they have any issues like Australia does with foreign investment? Mm -hmm. So Ukraine is very different to Australia in that with its uh, political change, it's moved from a, a communist type regime into a, a more democratic regime. But the overhang of the communist regime is that there are millions of land owners in Ukraine so that most people have been given land. So most people own anywhere from two to 10 hectares. There are thousands of people who do farm the land that they own, but increasingly most of them lease that land, so it becomes a supplementary form of income for them. There are companies that aggregate all those leases and make them available to other Ukrainian businesses or overseas investors. What's emerged in Ukraine are some very large farms known as agro holdings. So these are farms typically larger than 20,000 hectares, up to hundreds of thousands of hectares, employing modern crop technologies, often being vertically integrated. So most Profitable businesses are actually not the agro holdings, but they are businesses that are in between 10 to 30,000 hectares. Most of the businesses uh, run many crops. Often uh, a major difference between Ukrainian farms and our farms are that some people who lease their land lease it on a condition that the farm business employ them. So you may have an equivalent size Australian farm that may have two permanent employees. The same farm in Ukraine would have 100 permanent employees. And that's possible to run that business because labour is so cheap and you have a lot of sideline enterprises, dairying, horticulture, vegetable growing. But, but we can talk about that more later. Sure. Any other questions? Yes. Could I uh, follow up, uh, Ross? I uh, know you want to uh, delay your, your talk about uh, both Russia and Kazakhstan, but perhaps mm. you could give us a foreshadowing of what you expect to learn from those two studies uh, as to the relative importance of those three and their aggregate importance for Australia. Yes. So, in summary, uh, Russia is really important because it, it produces already you know, 60 million tonnes uh, versus Ukraine only producing about 20 million tonnes. This is a, a wheat I'm talking about. So uh, Russia has huge potential. Um, in all those countries, corruption is a, a major issue. The quality of infrastructure is a major issue. Uh, Kazakhstan is very oil rich, uh, unlike Ukraine. So the, the, there are a number of structural issues facing Kazakhstan and Russia. I think the future for Kazakhstan and for Australia, an issue may be if Kazakhstan moves into sheep production, which is perhaps just as much a threat as it moving into grain production. Um, Thank you. Any other questions? We're sort of uh, jammed between the interest in the speakers and lunch. Um, <laughs> we're running out of time. Any other questions? Well, look, thank you very much for your attendance. Would you please thank our speakers? Um,